Give me your best YouTuber intro. <laughs> Do I need to back up? Like, how big is this gonna be? Hey guys! Good to see you again! Can't wait to get started on our project! <laughs> Derek was hyped. Yeah, I'm hyped. We've got another G35 video with lots of extra goodies. Explain what we got here, Papa. Okay, so here's what happened. Papa. We didn't know this because we're building this uh, for a guy who's stationed in Turkey right now. So our communication was a little off. In our video where we did the suspension stuff on the G35, we put upper camber arms on the front, which he ordered all the parts and shipped them to us. So I never had to worry about what he ordered. It just, whatever. I was like, I'm not sure why he ordered upper camber arms. The, the, he could use them, but whatever. Well, it turns out he didn't actually order the upper camber arms. What he was trying to order was this arm. And this arm is the one that deletes that bucket that we also talked about in the previous video. So then they sent us these arms. <laughs> which were also wrong. Which are the tension. These are like the tension or the traction arms for the back. Then the third time was a charm. We did finally did finally get the right arms but they said just keep all the other stuff for the hassle so we're gonna put it all on then. we're gonna put all the arms on the back of this thing we are going to be also adding a hydraulic e-brake to the back for drift purposes so we got our hydro e-brake which is actually a reverse mounted one so when it's mounted in the car it's gonna be hopefully hidden and it's just this little arm sticking out so aluminum brackets and spacers to use two factory um, G35 calipers. We're adding two back there. So the first one's here. The second one, yes, I believe sits somewhere right across from that. Now you can see two. There's that spring bucket we were talking about. That we need to get rid of. This here is the traction arm. It sounds like a simple process, but it's not because we have to pull this whole hub assembly completely apart. We're actually going to be deleting the factory e-brake that's inside of here because we won't need it anymore. Uh, trimming up all of this dust shield so that we can get our new caliper mounted. Buying pads, getting everything aligned, bleeding the system, and mounting it all. So, Yeah, so just those 18 things. Yeah, it's a simple process. All you do is clap your hands and point and it does it because that's how YouTube oh. works. This is pretty much, I gotta get that out of there, what the whole assembly looks like stripped down. Um, we got our factory caliper that bolts right there. We've taken the axle out. I think while we're doing this right now, we're actually gonna pull the rear differential and weld that too, because race car. This is our bracket, okay? And this is about how it's gonna sit. So we were sort of pointing over here was going to be the caliper. It looks like it's going to sit. Sitting a little higher, but. Yep. And now um, we're wheel bearing is right here. And so our wheel bearing is actually going to sit on top of that. So it's actually going to act as like a half inch spacer. Well, less than that, like three eighths inch spacer yeah, maybe. It, it spaces it out for sure. But the thing is, is that our kit also comes with caliper spacers over here too, to make sure that everything. To bring everything out. Yeah. So our rotor is going to be that much farther out. Our wheels are actually going to be that much farther out too. So all these shiny boys, look at that. Shiny, 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 shiny. Shiny. Thick. like now two calipers in the back and the extra spacing helped out with our still looks good yeah helped out with our sunken fitment So 
this is what they call a drum style e-brake. So normally a car would have either disc or drum brakes in the rear. This car has a disc brake for when it's driving. And if we flip this over very gingerly, there's a drum on the inside. So this all just needs to go. We're gonna yeet that thing right out of there. Let me pop off like that. Without destroying the bearing. There it is. Bam. And that's off. Now that this is all apart, we just reassemble the same way we did on the other side. Now for step two. We've got everything on the wheels done. We've left the axles out. And while they're out, we're gonna drop that diff and then uh, do a little weldy weldy. Sticky, sticky. Sticky, sticky. We're gonna glue it together. How does the internet feel about gluing diffs? It better be all right with it. I don't know. The internet's opinion doesn't matter. There really is no downside. I mean, you're saving a thousand bucks <laughs> and it takes not that long, so. I mean, those guys did post that one rowdy video of them JB welding a diff into the Crown Vic. Did that oh, really yeah. work? Did it, it worked work? for a while, yeah. They had it going. <laughs> take a while now the next day well that didn't take very long just had to pull out almost the entire exhaust every Jeez. bolt was Crazy. seized did you have fun no that was a, not a fun time <laughs> we are draining it of all of its blood and uh and we'll clean it out a little bit that's its home that's where it used to be Before you start welding, make sure all your brake cleaner has evaporated or else... Fires. Fires. <laughs> That's one side of it welded, the other side not. You can't really get into that other side. Of uh, the yeah, I can, but it's... Just where the gears meet. Yeah, you can get up here and then basically just weld everything to everything and it'll, it'll do its job. Now, what is your opinion on the need of putting plates in there to weld in? I think it's a gimmick because I've never had one break and I've never used a plate in my life, but I've done a lot of these things. So just weld it. Yeah, just send it. And that is a welded diff compared to what it looked like before. So when your drive line spins now, both wheels are moving at the same time. Very welded. Because race car. Race car. Now once it's cooled enough, just put the cover back on, reinstall it, fill it up, and you're good to go. And she's mostly back together except for the exhaust. If you remember from the very first episode on this, we still have an exhaust leak under there which is under which is on the uh, cat, we believe, right? Yeah. Catalytic converter on the driver's side. So we're not gonna stick this all back in quite yet, not until we can address that issue. The next thing we need to look at is how to fit this long Johnny in here. <laughs> so we've got our two new calipers back there. We've got our lines coming up to here, and then this will be at what actuates. So this is your new uh, master cylinder for the rear brakes. Separate system from your normal brakes. Yeah, so we'll be able to smash our normal brake pedals in here and not have this handle kick out of our hand, which is what an inline one would do, and that is not optimal. A lot of people have basically hidden this in the dash. So they cut this part out and take this whole thing, and it basically sits, hard to describe, but it basically would sit. Side. Yeah, it would sit in here, and the, the handle would be about right here. So the only problem that we're kind of having with that is this car has a pretty crazy stereo system in here. There's a lot of stuff going on. 
a lot of I'm just fiddling the jibs down here. It's got quite a few jibs in there. We would technically need to take this stereo out, which is part of the allure of our barn find because that's circa like 2005. Proof of that is right here <laughs> in the uh, iPhone. Maybe iPhone didn't even exist back then. iPod that's, yeah, cable. That's probably just an iPod one. Huh? <laughs> this style of handle, it would have to be pushed in there, but they do make a different style that is reversed from that, correct? Yeah, so instead of you pulling back and having it push, it would be an actual pull. So it would go this way and you'd pull back on the handle. Which would then make that reservoir kind of exposed out. Yeah, it would sit. It would sit very, I mean, this handbrake is gonna get removed. So we would trim this down and, and set it down quite a ways right there, but it would sit about like that. Our handle placement isn't really gonna change. The handle will be either, you know, right. It's actually the handle will stay right here. It's just the amount of effort to hide all of that stuff. Yeah, and the other thing is too, is to fill this reservoir to bleed it and stuff, we're gonna have to stick like a tube in there, but it would be, you know, would, would be arguably kind of cool to just have the handle sitting there. We're not entirely sure which route we're gonna go on that yet. If we're gonna use this one, swap it out, we're still deciding. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely, we're gonna have to, it'll take a couple of beers, a couple of beers and we'll have it figured out for sure, I think. Uh, next video on this, this car is finally gonna be getting a wrap on the outside. We're going to sand all of this crap down on the hood, make sure the wrap sits on there nice. Do we have a color picked yet? No, we ha we don't have a color picked yet, but it's gonna be something kind of exciting. We're thinking somewhere in the greens, maybe. We're not sure. Uh, or maybe maybe we'll let you guys decide. I don't know. Maybe you should post in the comments what you think. I guess we're gonna teach Dan how to drift in it. Oh boy. Excited, Dan? What if I crash it? Then, then you, you own it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so we should be able to finish this one up in the next couple weeks, so stay tuned. Yeah. Do it.